Hello everybody, bit of a different video because we're looking at World War II, specifically the game system Operation Squad Evolution, published by Toriani Games, written by Massimo Toriani and Velatino del Castello. Now this is a squad based skirmish game, obviously set in World War II, and this game is meant to sort of focus on and recreate smaller encounters of larger battles. So think about individual actions like um, at Pegasus Bridge um, or even smaller than that where you know you're going to go and capture or knock out an 88 or you're going to try and capture a radio post. Game length runs between you from our games that we've played can be over in about 90 minutes in fact one game ended in about 45 minutes because i rolled as you'd expect um this is uh everything you need to play it's just this this one rule book there are additional free resources online on the toriani games website and uh, i got this game because i just wanted a bit of an alternative to bolt action i've played bolt action for for quite a while and i was just looking for something something a bit different and i picked this up now i actually got this about six months ago but i wanted to give it a few a uh, few plays get used to the system before I, I reviewed it or shared it on here so i'm going to uh, just basically run through the game just tell you a bit about it We've got a gameplay example because I figured the best way to review it is to just show you how it plays rather than just me tell you. You can actually see how the basics of the system work. Um, and then I'll leave some links up at the uh, at the end of the video where you can either purchase it or you can go check out some more stuff about it. So as I say, this is Operation Squad Evolution and uh, bugger it. Let's just set it up and I'll, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I always find the best way to talk about a game is to actually just show its core mechanics. So I've quickly set up this small encounter here so I can just show you the, the core mechanics of the game, uh, a few of the actions and how, how combat works. So very simply for this, we have three German grenadiers. Um, very simple grenadiers. Now, this is the important value in the game, the TV, the tactical value. That's effectively the unit skill, and that's a number they're going to be adding to their dice rolls and their initiative tests and all sort of things like that. Each of the Germans is armed with a Car 98 rifle and an STG 39 grenade. They've got one each. On this side, we've got the British, and we have um, three Red Devils. They are led by a sergeant, who you'll see has a TV of five and um, just two paratroopers, both with Lee Enfields and two number 36 Mills bombs, so one each. Um, now, basically, there are two phases. The first is the initiative phase, and then the second is the action phase. So in the initiative phase, the German player will roll 2d6 and add the highest tactical value of his remaining models to that roll, and the British player will do the same. So if we roll 2d6 for the Germans, they've all got the same tactical value, their tactical value is 4. So the German player is 9 plus 4, he gets 13. The British player is getting 2d6 and adding 5 for the sergeant. British player gets 7 plus 5 is 12. So the German player has priority. So the German player has priority. That means he can decide whether or not he wants to be the active player first. And in this case, he's going to be. Uh, you might have noticed the little green gem up by the uh, paratrooper sergeant. Um, to keep things interesting, he's hidden. So he's sneaking his way along the inside of that hedge. And these guys here don't know what's going on. So the German player has decided to start um, the orders. Now, there are a number of actions you can take with each of your models. They are fire, and very simply, they shoot. First aid, if the model has that ability. Indicate a target, if they are a leader, if they have binoculars, they can communicate the position of an enemy and everyone nearby will shoot at it. They can move carefully. If they do, they move 10 centimeters and they gain a hidden marker. They can move and fire, in which case they move 15 centimeters, but they take a penalty on their roll to hit. They can move fast, which means they move 20 centimeters, and if someone shoots at them, they take a penalty to hit. They can rally if they're shaken, and if they need to, they can reload. So the German player decides, first of all, that the German here with his Car 98 rifle is simply gonna take a fire action, and he is going to shoot at the paratrooper on the road. 
Now, there is, you don't have to do this, but what we've done is when we've said that the model is taking an action, we didn't generally tend to put a dice next to it to indicate what model is doing it. Now that the German player has declared an action, the British player can react to that. And it doesn't have to react to it with the model that's been shot at. However, in this case, I'm going to. So, the paratrooper, because he doesn't want to be hit, the British player um, says that he will react, and he is going to take a move fast action. So he's going to run, basically. You have to indicate where you're going. So he is going to try and run behind this cart. So I'm going to put a dice next to him. And it goes back to the German player. Now the German player can declare up to three actions and the British player up to three reactions. But the British player can only react. Therefore, if the German player chooses to, now um, he could end it and we would just resolve these two actions. However, the German player is going to take one more action and that is with this chap here who also has line of sight to him now he is going to move and shoot as well so he's going to move and shoot now the british player um, is going to decide to pass because he's he's got a plan so now we have to roll for initiative to see what order they actually execute their actions in so to work out the order it's very simple you do an initiative roll with each of the models and you add their tv their skill value so everyone on the board bar the sergeant over there has a tv of four so for this german down here who was moving and shooting Oh, he got a big roll. So he got 16. For the German behind the barricade. He got 10. 7. He got 11. So the order is going to be this German is going to move and shoot. Then the paratrooper is going to execute his move. And then the German is, uh, he would get to act. So we'll just go into that and resolve it. So the German in the field is going to resolve his move and fire action. So for a move and fire, he can move 15 centimeters. Just going to bring him basically to where those dice are. Now he can resolve his shot against that paratrooper. Okay, so the German is 29 centimeters away. And... What we have to do is we look on the national weapon characteristics for the Germans and we find the Car 98 rifle and if we look between 20 and 40 centimetres he gets a bonus of 4 to his roll. So you can see the optimal range for the Car 98 is between 0 and 20 where they get plus 6 to their roll. The second number is to do with armour penetration on vehicles. So for this roll he's going to add 4 and you can see obviously as it's a um, bolt action rifle it's got a rate of fire of 1. You can see up here the submachine gun has 3, uh, Lugers get 2. So for this roll he is adding 4. Now when you roll to hit you're rolling 3d6 not 2. And as you can see, there's a handy little flow chart here. So the first modifier you're going to add is the TV of the firing model, as long as you're not wounded. So if you become wounded, you lose your skill bonus, which can be quite big. So he's got a skill bonus of four. So he's running 3d6 plus four. Then you're checking the range where well, we just did that. And we saw that he's getting a bonus of four for that. So currently he's rolling 3d6 plus eight. There's no other modifiers that are applicable. So his roll to hit is 3d6 plus eight. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty good roll. So uh, he gets 22. Now that is, a, that is a huge roll. However, that's not the end of it. So now we look at the target model. Now, does the model have any cover? No, he's got a clear, clear line of sight. Has that model got an armor value? No, it's just a paratrooper. And has he moved fast? No. Has he moved more than 25 centimeters? No. Was he not in line of sight uh, when the action was assigned? No, but the firing model has used move and fire. So now the British player rolls a d6 and takes that off of the German player's score. Five. So 22 minus five is 17. So we look on the infantry damage table at the top. And I know what this is going to be. So you can see here, 10 or less would be a shot misses. 11 to 13, they're shaken. 14 or 15, they're wounded. But 17 or more, the target model is put out of action and removed from play. So that was a decisive move there by the German. So he has knocked that paratrooper out. Well, he shot him, basically, he's dead. Now, these disappear. 
And that model would receive a marker to say that that's the end of his turn. The game does come with lots of little counters, but I, I prefer just to use mine, so I'm going to use these gems. So the blue counters indicate that their turn is, that they've, they've acted. Now, in the order of initiative, the British player was next. Obviously, he is dead. And the German player can now go. Now, because that German player um, had elected to fire at that paratrooper, but he is now dead, he could, if there was a valid target within 20 centimetres, change target. However, he can't, so that shot is just wasted. So that's the end of that model's activation as well. So now the British player becomes the active player. So he's none too pleased that the, one of his paratroopers has been taken out. So he chooses to use this guy here, and he is gonna um, elect to move and fire as well. He's gonna move around the barricade and he's going to shoot at the German that shot his mate. The German player decides not to react. In that so because of that we just resolved this guy's action straight away okay so he's moved and he's going to take his shot so i've just measured and the british paratrooper is 20 centimeters away from the german so if we look at the stats for a lee enfield we can see at 20 centimeters he gets a plus six bonus so if you remember before it's 3d6 we're adding six for the range this time and we're adding four because of his skill so we're adding 10 to this roll that's a result of 19. Now, does the German have any defence? I don't believe he does. He hasn't moved fast enough. He doesn't have any cover. He didn't move fast. He only moved and fired. However, he wasn't in line of sight at when the action was assigned. So, he gets to defend with 1d6. So, he's on 19. The German player needs a decent roll. 1. 19 minus 1 is 18. That German is dead as well. Back to the German player to decide what to do. So the German is going to have his last remaining grenadier. He's going to fire at the paratrooper. British player is going to have his sergeant. He is going to move carefully along the hedge line. So we do the same again. We roll initiative. So the sergeant is adding five to his roll. Ooh, 15. Now you only roll the initiative when you're opposing each other. So if the roll is uncontested, like uh, the action, sorry, is uncontested, like the last one, you wouldn't bother rolling. Uh, 7, 11. So the British paratrooper sergeant is going first. So he's going to move carefully 10 centimeters, maintaining his hidden status. The German grenadier is 30 centimeters away. So he gets to add four for his range, which was 30 centimeters. He gets to add four for his skill. So he's rolling 3d6 plus eight. Oh, not so good. So 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, the British player doesn't have anything uh, going for him. He has no, no cover because he's not directly in cover. He has no uh, bonuses from moving fast and he was in line of sight at the start. So if we have a look, what do we say it was? 13, the model is shaken. So basically, all he can do is take simple actions. So when a unit is shaken, they're in shock. Um, basically we use these little red gems to indicate that. And their next action can only be to rally or move carefully or move fast towards their deployment zone or, or towards the closest cover. So that is the end of the phase. So now what we would do, we would gather everything up and we'll just go into the next round and see if the uh, paratroopers can bring it back. So we come to the initiative roll. The Germans get 2d6 plus four for priority. Oh, that's not good. So they get a six overall. The British player is rolling 2d6 plus five. So the priority is with the British. So I think for the rest of, the ex of this example, we're gonna have everybody act. So the British player elects to have his um, sergeant who's behind the hedge here. He's going to move and throw a grenade at the uh, German here. The German player is going to react to that by saying he's going to shoot said uh, British sergeant when he appears. Just because you can't see them at the start of their turn, you can still react to it. And if the German player acts before this uh, this chap, he, he does that, he will wait, and when he appears, he will shoot him, effectively like going on ambush. The British player decides that he will attempt to move fast into cover with this fellow. This German here is also, is gonna shoot at him before he can. So now we're going to roll initiative and actually find out what order this all goes in. So, for the paratrooper sergeant who's behind the tree, he gets 2d6 plus his skill of 5. So he got 12 overall. For the German here, he wants to get more than 12. So he's got a skill of 4, so 2d6 plus 4. 
Nope, he is not. So that grenade is going to be coming over. Um, for the British here, he's got seven, plus his skill of four is 11. He's acting on an 11 as well. So the order is going to be the paratrooper sergeant. Then it's going to be the British soldier here because it, because they have priority, they won the priority roll uh, for initiative, they win ties. Then it's going to be this German, then it's going to be this German. So because the paratrooper sergeant has broken cover, he's lost his hidden status. So if we check the Mills bomb range, there we go. So up to 20 centimeters, it gets a bonus of three which we can see has a minimum range of five centimeters is single shot so it's his only chance and it's got indirect fire now indirect fire basically means that he ignores the cover bonus that these guys would normally get from the barricade so he's rolling 3d6 adding five for his skill and three for the range he's adding eight. Oh, that's uh that's not great so uh plus eight that's ten so that's 14 so that is the grenade goes off and it uses the same chart so what do you say that's 14 so the, tar the bomb has gone off the mills bomb and the target is wounded now if i'd have missed completely got 10 or less the grenade would deviate and then you use a d10 and you work out its direction roll a couple of d6 and find out where it goes so the target is wounded so we'll get a wounded token next to him but as it's a blast weapon everything within 10 centimeters of it is going to be taking some extra damage but i think oh no he's just out just out so the other guy next to him is going to be taking some damage as well so we can see that there's no intervening cover between the two models and so we work roll on the burst damage table so we roll a d6 he didn't get 10 or less on the hit roll there's no intervening walls he's not inside a building or a wood he's not part of a section um it's quite cool as well as you can hear there's pump action shotguns in this um so basically we're just rolling a d6 to see what happens to him six Okay, so he's put out of action and he's removed from play. So he wounded the first Grenadier, but he killed the second. So he is gone and the other one is wounded. That's not bad. And that's one of the reasons I like this game, because they actually have grenades that are, you know, quite quite powerful if you if you manage to get them off like that one did. So as you can see, I've put a wounded marker uh, with a little blood drop down next to him. As I say, there are markers in the game that you can cut out, um, but uh, I prefer to use these little gems just for these videos because they show up a little bit better and they don't clog up the scenery. So the next in the initiative order was the guy who has been wounded. Now, the problem with being wounded is it also makes you shaken. So his only action can be to rally or to move um, away. So he is going, his action this turn is simply gonna be to rally and that basically makes him unshaken. The other problem with being wounded is it minuses his skill value. So if he was to shoot at this paratrooper sergeant, even though he'd get a bonus of plus six because of the range, he wouldn't be adding his skill this time. So if he had his full skill, he'd be adding 10 because it's four plus six plus 3d6. Now he wouldn't. So that was his action for the turn. So he's been. And finally, this guy's action down here was to run into cover. He is shaken. So he is still shaken until he until he performs a rally action. So he still keeps hold of that marker. Right. And we'll just resolve one more turn and see what happens. I just remembered that when he uh, moved and threw the grenade, the Germans should have got a uh, D6 to add to the defense roll. So, of course, that could have could have veered off even more. But we'll stick with it, um, which is what we tend to do when we, we do games and just remember for next time. So we now roll for a priority to see who has it. The British get 2D6 plus 5 because they're still fighting fit. Wow, that's uh, big. So they have 17. Now, the German player only has a tactical value of 4. However, because he's wounded, he doesn't get to add that list now. So uh, he's just rolling 2D6 and as suspected he is going second so the british player elects uh, to have his model fire with his sten gun at the german uh, both shots um, he's not moving anywhere he's just going to shoot at him the german player as a reaction um, chooses to shoot at the british player and the model over here will just simply take a rally action rolling for initiative here british player is acting on 15 10 plus 5 and the German player, not adding his skill, is adding is acting on a seven. And even though it doesn't make a big difference because this guy's just, you know, going to be rallying, we'll still roll for him. He's acting on a nine. So if we find the Sten gun, which is here, we can see that up to 20 centimeters, it gets a plus six bonus. 
and he's getting three shots. So he's going to resolve three attacks against him. Now I can show you how cover is resolved and there's a lovely table here with lots of different types of cover on it and terrain. It shows you a modifier to movement that some uh, vehicles take and infantry. So you can see that infantry wanting to cross a barricade suffer a d6 penalty. So if you're moving over it and you're trying to move fast with 15 centimeters, you roll a d6 and take that off of it and that's how far you go but we can also see that it adds 1d6 cover so the sten gun is getting a massive bonus it's 3d6 plus the 6 for the range plus the 5 for the paratrooper sergeant skill so he's adding 11 so 3d6 plus 11 it's going to be big 20. the german paratrooper has a d6 in cover so he needs high here Oh, six. So he reduces that to a 14. And if we look up the result of 14, I think that might not be enough. Result of 14 is wounded. A model can only take two, can only take the wounded status twice. So the German has now died. So I hope that's just a, a good little example of basically how the back and forth of the system works. There's, there's obviously a lot more to it than just these three here. I mean, you'll usually have between 10 and 15 models on the board and just you know you can you can pull off some quite fun moves where some guy bursts out of cover but gets shot straight away or you know he runs up you pop a grenade into a building it blows up it wounds everyone in there and and then you can go from there it's, it's just good fun and quite cinematic but i just wanted to show you how cover has a cumulative effect in this game now most games if you're in say soft cover like this fella here you would just say oh he gets a soft cover bonus but in this game you get the cover bonus for each piece of cover that the shot passes over so for here this german is going to shoot at that british paratrooper so he gets 3d6 adding his skill of four and adding four for the range bonus. However, the British player is gonna to get to roll a D6 for this barricade and a D6 as well for the cover over here. If this model's last action had also been to move fast, say he ran there, he would be adding another D6. So we'll just go with the cover. So let's just quickly roll. So three D6 plus eight. 16 so that's a kit that's a, a, a kill result now the cover the german player is rolling 2d6 sorry the german player the british player so we take five off of that that goes down to 11 that would just be a shaken result not a, or actually would it be a miss no it's shaken so cover plays a big part in this game in the little game we played here is i was just trying to show the system by being quite reckless and jumping out so cover plays a big part in this the moment you come out in the open is it's usually over um, if you get caught in the open which i i think is fairly realistic from you know what i know um anyway that's the system so uh i will uh, i'll now wrap things up and show you a bit of uh, army building okay so i actually just wanted to show with you how big a 700 point army is in this game so this is a red devils paratrooper squad and this is 697 points this is what you what you get i mean it's not a large scale game so as you can see on the paratrooper squad list you have to have one paratrooper sergeant you have to have one paratrooper machine gunner and you have to have at least five to seven paratroopers. You can then have up to one sniper, you can have up to one machine gun section, a light mortar section, a medic, and down the bottom actually it says you can get a vehicle. So if we just run through this, so here is my, here is my sergeant and he costs 80 points and you can see he comes with a Colt pistol, Sten gun, Mills bomb grenades, there are other options for him down below. So there's there's my sergeant. Then we have the machine gunner. He comes with the Bren gun, Mills bombs and a grenade. Now you can buy assistance for him. I have chosen not to. And then we have the five paratroopers and I've separated them because these two have Sten guns. So we have three paratroopers here with a rifle each. These are 45 points each. We have two paratroopers with Sten guns at 45 points each, plus an additional five points for the Sten gun. I've paid another five points down here for him. I've chosen to throw a medic in at 65 points and a sniper at a whopping 145 points. And then 
that left me on um, 607 points. So I could have fit in another two paratroopers in there, but instead for the plus 10 points per model, I've chosen to give them all the veteran status. And what the veteran characteristic allows you to do is re-roll one of your priority dice. So that's quite big in this because you can, you know, you once you've seen what your enemy have got, you can re you can re-roll that and actually completely change the outcome. So these guys are, are quite likely to act first. In each army list, you have a number of options and unit variants. So as you can see here, the leader can add binoculars for plus 30 points. Um, here, two paratroopers can become assistants to a machine gunner for plus 10 points each. Uh, one paratrooper can become an assistant to a peat launcher if you take one. You can take a flamethrower. And then down the bottom here, these are where you can add different characteristics like seasoned fighters, veterans, camouflage. Um, and then if you look at the bottom, each squad can buy one vehicle of each type. Check the data sheet and variance of points value. Note, paratrooper squads cannot buy half tracks. So there you go. So that is basically a 700 point army now just to show you like how much these points go up if i was to add this uh anti-tank six pounder in um that would be another 280 points so we'd be on uh, 980 points there if i was then to add this cromwell into the game there we go a cromwell is 960 points so we're looking at the best part of 2000 points just there and then compare that to a bolt action army what i'm trying to illustrate here is how easy it is to to build a force for this game you can buy one box set you could buy just a couple of sprues um and you could just try something out if you don't like an army then it doesn't matter now all the games we've played we haven't played anything more than 700 points at the moment and we haven't really used vehicles or gun sections we've had a great time just using units like this um so there's loads that you can play around with and um you if you're one of those people who's a big world war ii enthusiast and you've done a big german army and you've done a, a big russian army and you really fancied building another but can't face you know a, a massive project I'll just paint up a squad of 10 thins on skis and have at it so you know there's a lot of choice in this game so yeah there we go that is a 700 point paratrooper force and there we have it that's a run through very basic one of operation squad evolution um, the rule book is set out as you would expect into sections and the nice thing about it is all of the actions are set out well but also the consequences of those actions so you're not leafing through the book to another chapter to find out what moving carefully does to your opponent it actually tells you down here the modifiers that your opponent will take um, as well as all of the rules for terrain situational problems such as grenades or spotting tests it's also got all of the individual charts for nations weapons so they've gone to the effort of actually differentiating say the car 98 from the uh, garand rules on suppression sections and of course a big section on vehicles and all of the this is something i like all of the different actions that your vehicles can take because are, are listed out so even the uh, the driver has got all of the additional stuff he can do like operating the radio passengers reloading things all of the things the leader can do so if you have got that tank and you want to have one tank taking on um a whole ss battalion um then um you could feasibly do that although you'll probably end up losing quite quickly um yeah so anyway i hope you enjoyed this uh, this flip through and gameplay example so as I say, we've got three army lists for each nation in the main rulebook. We've got the Americans with an infantry squad, ranger squad, and airborne, plus a selection of vehicles, which includes the M3A1, Sherman, and an M10. The Brits have got the Fusiliers, Commandos, and Paratroopers, Red Devils. Uh, examples of their vehicles that they're getting on here is six pounder, well, vehicles, gun, six pounder anti tank gun, Universal Carrier, of course, and the Cromwell, Sherman Firefly, if you want it. The Guards Division for the um, uh, Russians, and uh, Rifle Squads and Assault Squads. Uh, they've got things in here like the Gaz Truck. Uh, the BA-10 and of course the T-34 and finally the Germans comes with the list for Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers and Fallschirmjäger and in here you've got rules for things like Kubelwagens, Opal Blitz, uh, Half Tracks and of course a Panzer IV and a Panther. Now 
the additional army lists that are available online at Toriani Games, they have rules for things like Tigers and all sorts of different variants of Sherman. So I recommend if there isn't one of these doesn't interest you, go and have a look on their website. The army lists are free. You just load it up in the English version or you're going to be reading it in Italian. Um, and there's, I think there's about 70, 75 different lists. As I say, it includes Hungarians, Italians, Japanese, Finnish. There's loads on there. Um, and then there's the experience system in the back for those of you that want that enjoy a bit of a campaign system. That's got you covered as well. So there we go. I I recommend this game. I, I don't like giving things sort of values out of 10, but if I wanted to give this some pros, I'd say it's a small game, that's a pro. It's inexpensive. The rule book's about £25. I think it's available as a PDF on War Games Vault for less than that, and I got this through North Star Games. Um, Model-wise, it's pretty inexpensive as well. If you can find someone who can supply um, sprues, fairly cheap um, if you get them off War Games Illustrated or if you go to like Reaper Games uh, where you can get a lot of sprues um, from different nations, mix them together, you, you've already got a force. Um, another pro, uh, you can basically play two or three games of this in an afternoon. You could put together three link scenarios where, oh, you I don't know, you're taking the 88 then you're assaulting a farmhouse and then you've got to hold it against counter-attack. You could do those three games and run the experience over into, into each game. Very, very easy. Um, and then the other pro for me personally, and I think from other people would like, is it it has an experience system in it, which um, I, you know, I know people like that development. Um, if I was going to pick out some cons, it, it comes with a lot a lot of counters okay these are these this is one page and i counted out and you've got things like out of ammo grenade wounded move cautiously now i don't necessarily think that's a problem um i don't like using loads of counters in my games um we've sort of uh, substituted um some of these gems in um for wounds and for hidden markers other people might not have a problem doing this um however it's some of them it's quite obvious if someone's moved cautiously you can you can sometimes remember that quite easily um this is it that's another con there isn't loads of expansions there's there's you know a, a decent presence on um online that i've seen not a massive one um but but you know a decent size one so the people are there to talk to if you have um, problems um the, as i say the toriani games website that has um, some extra material for you to use but you would have to come up with scenarios um so if you're looking for something that's already got loads and loads of scenarios and expansion books and theater books this doesn't have it this this is it basically the rule book and all of the free army lists online my only other con is that the system may be a little bit too crunchy for some people I, i'm not sure um the very base system of rolling 3d6 adding your skill value then adding um your situational range then minusing a d6 um for cover then minusing a d6 because you're wounded then minusing another d6 because they move fast some people might not like that that seems some some people might think that's a lot to go through just to to get a result I enjoy it and I think that this system um, reminds me of Dead Man's Hand a bit and also could be applied to, to other um, periods of warfare. Anyway, there we go. So that is Operation Squad Evolution. What do you guys think of it? Is it something that you've checked out? Have you played it? Let me know in the comments or if it's something that you want to play or is, if there's anything you want to know that I haven't answered here, then drop me a comment below. Anyway, I hope you're all well. I hope that you're all getting some painting done and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.